database management module 4.2 this is part of the IBIT course for grade 12 how are you going to manage and protect data there are two ways the one is validation the other is verification you must know the difference between these Validation means that we check whether data that's being input is acceptable or reasonable. For example, a gender can only be M or F, or male or female. Um, actually, these days there are other genders, such as in Germany, but verification means that we check whether data is accurate or not, or we determine whether the data was accurately translated when the data is transferred from one source to another. This means when the data is being inputted, then it is entered twice, or we do certain things to make double sure that the data has been entered accurately. So to ensure the data, the accuracy of data, we do everything we can to ensure data validity. We will rather try and obtain data directly from instruments rather than people, for example, RFID tags. And we will send users copies of their data so they can verify it. We will cross-check all the time. It's all about accuracy. Um, to ensure the validity of data, we will also minimize user input. For example, we'll use default values. In a high school admin program, we'll set the value for the grade field to 8, because the majority of new learners will be in grade 8. We'll use GUI controls like checkboxes or list boxes or other components where the user chooses by clicking on an item instead of him having to type data in. And we can use data from other systems. For example, a primary school can send the database to the high school for the new grade 8 learners, which will minimize input. So I'm going to go through different, I think it's about five different validation techniques. A format check is when a string of characters must have a required pattern or format. For example, an ID code could be triple L and many zeros or three letters and six digits. So we would know immediately that AB9423872 is wrong because it starts with two letters instead of three. A type check. So this is when the type could be only letters or only numbers. And when a number is entered, then only characters 0 to 9 are accepted and letters are rejected. It's a type check. A range check is when a value must be within a particular range of value. For example, the gender can be M or F. Symbols on a mark sheet, H, F cars from a car company, Ford or VW, birth dates, 0 to 120. And this is a range check. Anything outside those ranges will be rejected. A length check. The number of characters entered in a string must be within specified limits. For example, a city name may not be more than 20 characters. A character check. This is when the software checks that a string of characters does not contain invalid characters or symbols. For example, registering a baby's new birth and name. The name cannot have numbers in it, so K with an 8 would be rejected. This is a character check. A presence check is when essential data items which are compulsory to enter for example, and they're usually shown with a star when you're filling in a form. If you don't enter them, the form will not allow you to go to the next page. You have to enter data before it allows you to submit. Integrity of data is the overall completeness, accuracy and consistency of data in the database. Can the data be trusted? We use three different techniques to allow to ensure this. Normalization is used when setting up the database. We use validation to enter the data. And we use verification 
also when inputting the data to ensure that it's really correct data. Access control in a network is when we control who may use what. So we console, control the user's access to different resources. We will secure the physical access to equipment and we'll have good password policies so that the data is kept secure. Sometimes in a database, every single change is logged. This is called an audit trail. So it's just a an audit trail is a record that is kept somewhere and stored for future reference. It keeps tracks of who made changes to the database and when they did it. A whole extra set of tables is obviously required. You'll need the date, the time, the username, etc. What changes have been done, to which tables, to which data. It's a lot of extra data that needs to be stored. So it stores things like inserting, deleting, editing data, and the time and date when the changes were made and who made them. It does slow down the performance of the database as a whole. Although it is very useful when the data is extremely sensitive. For example, a bank may do this. Um, maybe a hospital, places like that. Parallel data sets, which is another word for this, is mirroring the data. It's when we keep multiple copies of data. Then if one set of the data fails, the parallel set can be used immediately. There's no downtime. And it works best if they're kept in separate locations. Obviously, if they're in the same location and a disaster happens, it's not going to help. Warehousing, as you know, the size of the database affects its efficiency. A database that gets too big is going to get slow and sluggish. So keeping old records in the database will make it large and slow, and it will get larger and larger as time goes by. So the options are just delete the old records, or else backing up and then deleting, or a better option is warehousing. If you can imagine warehousing, the traditional idea of warehousing is storing um, crates of whatever products are going out to shops or to places, and they're all stored in a big warehouse. The idea with data warehousing is the same. You store tons of data in a secure location. So in data warehousing, we take records from the current database, we modify them into a new format, and we store them in a different type of database. This database is optimized for mining the information from the huge collection of data. So the old unneeded records are then deleted. This reduces the size of the old database, and it speeds up the database. In warehousing, you keep a copy of the old records as you would in a backup, and it makes that old data valuable in a brand new way. Data can become a hacking tool. A clever hacker will know how to make a database crash, insert certain data in the inputting stage so that unexpected things happen. The program usually expects the data to be in a certain format. If a hacker knows how the system works, he can feed the system data to cause it to crash. And if the program has a high level of rights or permissions and the program crashes, it may be possible for a hacker to gain access to the computer or networks that the program was running on. And we're going to go through an example of this. An SQL injection attack. Programmers use string handling and user input to generate SQL queries on the go. You may have done this in your PAT project where you have a 
SQL statement, but the input for what you're looking for will arrive there as a parameter and it, it will, the data will be contained in a variable. So here's the example. Say we have select star from invoices where cust ID equals quote. And we're going to fill in the customer ID we're looking for. So that comes from user input. And the program joins the fixed statement, which is what is shown in yellow here, and then what the user inputs into the final SQL statement that is sent off to the database. But a hacker who's using the program and knows what the SQL statement looks like, he might enter stuff into the data entry field and get the database to do things the program did not expect it to do. Here's an example. So instead of just typing JQ351 or any other valid customer ID, the hacker types in something like XX000, which is not a valid customer ID, but it doesn't matter. And then the rest of the command or quote one quote equals quote one. The result is an SQL statement which reads as follows. Select star from invoices where cust ID equals XX000 in quotes or quote one quote equals quote one quote. So the statement actually asks the database to list all the invoices because the all part, one equals one, part of the new SQL statement will always evaluate as true for all records, so the query will list all the records in the table. Good data value validation structures will make SQL injections attacks far more difficult to carry out. It is difficult to inject SQL if the data entry field in the program is limited to the length of the field in the database. This is called a length check. Strictly typed and checked to only allow key legal characters. The quote would not be allowed and um, the equal would not be allowed, etc. So this would reject the input from the had data hacker and this would not work. So in database management, who does what? We're just going to look at two of the um, of the careers that are involved. The database administrator, she's responsible for designing the database, security, backup and restoration plans and policies, monitoring the database performance and general maintenance of the database management system. The programmer, they are um, responsible for developing the software, but they have to work within the rules and limitations set by the database administrator in terms of the database structure. And that's all for today. Goodbye.